All righty, traders, let's jump into our recap today. It is Wednesday, November 15th, 2023. Let's take a look at the trades and the market uh, today. We're going to keep it short uh, tonight and to the point. We got some uh, cool stuff to share with you. Let's just jump into the markets. And for the most part, it was a nothing day on the market. I mean, we uh, opened up uh, fractionally on the session and pretty much just traded in a sideways mode the entire time. Technically on SPY, we were up 95 cents on the day, uh, 0.2 of a percent. So really not a lot of anything today. Uh, but I think the thing that uh, you have to really be cognizant of here uh, is the fact that um, you know, despite uh, gapping up and moving up on the session uh, today, we still remain pretty far above the three ATR line. So uh, we're above the three ATR on the daily, uh, and we remain uh, in pretty good upward mo move movement here on the MACD and the RSI. RSI continuing to be in overbought territory on the daily, on the weekly, still moving up. So a little bit of a rest day, still overdone above the three ATR. I would expect some sort of revision on this uh, in the next day or so uh, here. I just think we're just too much, too quick, and you got to pull back, and you're getting farther away from a fairly flat 3 ATR, uh, which to me bodes really well for a pullback, but you got the 21 EMA crossing the 50 EMA. Very nice uh, signal there. Uh, so again, I think overall pretty bullish on the market. Uh, I think we can go higher from here. I just think you need a little bit of a pullback in order to engineer that next leg higher. If we take a look at the Qs here, pretty much the same thing, only up a couple of uh, cents, 29 cents on the Qs. MACD, RSI moving higher. We are still above the 3 ATR, which is pretty sideways here. So I think reversion to the mean, back to the 21 EMA is needed. RSI is uh, overbought. Uh, and then a, a little bit of a break today on IWM, which was just on a massive gap up and move yesterday. Moved up higher on the session, hit the 200-day moving average, and then pulled back. Uh, MACD moving higher, RSI moving higher. The weekly looks good uh, overall. I think things look just pretty good overall in the market. I just think you're a little bit overextended in the short term. And a pullback to the 21 EMAs here would not be out of the question. Uh, all right, let's uh, skip down here. Uh, put call ratio dropped today. So again, the more this is pulling down the 10-day moving average, the more the market's going to keep uh, moving up. We've showed that every night, so I'm going to skip it tonight. But understanding that you had a pretty good down day here on the put call ratio. And because of that, I think uh, it's really going to pull that market down. Look at the, you can barely see it here. It's not easy to see. Uh, but the green line here, which is your 21-day moving average, is definitely headed uh, lower. And the, the more this heads lower on the 10-day uh, you know, moving average and even the 21, the more that keeps pointing down, the more the market will uh, move up. VIX on the session, relatively unchanged, still uh, pretty dead as far as volatility goes. So volatility is low, not a great time to be putting on premium trades. You are trying to turn up here on the on the MACD, but RSI is just flatlining uh, sideways here. Saying so overall, uh, this looks pretty low uh, and I don't see anything positive here that would get the markets to stop moving higher. Uh, the, looking at the US dollar uh, on the session today as well. Gapped up a tad, so it was up fractionally, 0.3 of a percentage today. Nothing more than an over, so oversold bounce off of the 3 ATR today. Uh, MACD still heading lower on the daily, so is RSI. Uh, that's all good for a lot of other trades and the markets in general. Looking at the 10-year uh, uh, treasury, that did move up uh, today. We did get... Uh, some decent uh, numbers uh, this morning as well, just on the uh, producer price index stuff, just seems to keep calming down. Uh, you know, things are moving exactly the way the Fed wants them. So we look at the core PPI this morning, basically flat on the core, uh, considering they were expecting a forecast of 0.3 of, uh, I think 0.3%. So came in cooler, 
retail sales still decently strong. And then the month over month PMI uh, definitely dropped on the session. So when you have those, you know, continual indicators that, you know, the economy might be cooling, inflation is cooling, uh, it's going to be good for the market and the market's certainly eating that up. Uh, but you get the uh, 10 year uh, treasury here bouncing off really the three ATR uh, here. So you would expect some reversion to the mean a bit on it. Doesn't mean that this downtrend uh, that we've really started to establish here, uh, this downtrend is in uh, in place and we'll see uh, where things go from there. Uh, breaking a little bit of this uptrend uh, here as well. So we are currently in a bit of a downtrend on the 10 year. We'll see if we get uh, to some of these support levels and I'll continue to uh, move these out uh, a bit so we can see where support uh, might fall. And of course, then on TLT, you would expect that uh, we would drop on the session with the rates heading higher. Uh, so rates getting a bit of a bounce, TLT moving down here. Again, I think it's constructive. I think anything close to this 21 EMA is a time to potentially get in. I just think you're fooling yourself if you think rates are going to zero. Okay, the Fed's not cutting tomorrow. It's not going to happen the rest of this year. I don't know if the Fed's going to cut, you know, at the beginning of next year either for at least a while. And until the Fed cuts, why are rates going to drop any further? Why is TLT going to move substantially higher? Doesn't mean it can't just continue to uh, improve here. And I think as far as an investment goes, yeah, that's all great. Now, if we move from 90 to 100, Great, you get a 10% move. We've moved from, you know, the mid 80s here to the upper 80s, 90. I mean, it's a 6% move. I think there's a lot better things you can do with your money to get 6% uh, than TLT. But if you want to get take the long shot and play the long game, that rates are going lower. But where do you think rates are going? Do you think rates are going from 5%, which is what we hit back here, at the beginning or at the middle of uh, October, do you think rates are going down to three, two percent anytime soon? You got to be kidding if you think we're hitting the low threes uh, anytime soon. I can certainly see us dropping to, you know, four two, four three, four percent maybe. I think it'd be a good number. But what happens when we hit there? Do we settle? Do we bounce a little bit there? Is that where rates stop? Well, when if rates are going to stop there. Well, where's TLT going to stop? Maybe at 100? Okay, well, from here, that's 10%, you know, 12% move. I think there's better things you can do with your money. Uh, I just don't think you're going to double it in TLT anytime soon. Now, TMF might be another opportunity uh, for you uh, because, you know, hey, I can get it for four bucks and maybe it goes to six, six and a half. Uh, here now, now I'm talking like a 30, 33% gain in, I don't know, three, four months, uh, something like that, maybe even less, two, three months. Okay. Uh, I'd be in for 30% in three months. I'm not sure I'm in for 10, 12% in three months. I think we can do better than that in a lot of other places. All right. If we take a look at futures uh, here, 6A moved up a little bit on the dollar, uh, just kind of moving sideways. Uh, 6B, your British pound pulled back just a fraction. Uh, on that news, uh, 6C sideways, uh, and then your uh, euro just down fractionally uh, on the day today. So uh, there's where you are on most of the Forex. Taking a look at bonds, uh, I think this pullback today in bonds, nice opportunity. I did not short any bonds uh, in here today, but I think if we get any kind of a pullback to like the 112 mark in here, which is your 21 moving average, I will do it again. Uh, so I'll continue to sell naked puts on bonds as we meander down around these prices. Uh, oil on the session tried to move a bit on the day and then just fell and sold off a bit on the session. So oil selling off in the session, still staying in this downtrending channel. Uh, that's where we are. That's what we'll play. Uh, that's where our trades are uh, based on right now. I still think You've got good support in this 75, 76 neighborhood where we uh, bounced last time. Let's see if we can hold that uh, maybe down to the you know the mid to lower 70s at most for now. 
MACD trying to improve, RSI trying to improve on the daily, the weekly still in charge, pushing things lower, but how much lower can oil go? If we look at volatility on oil uh, on the session, uh, it was up just fractionally. So a little bit of a, a, a tick on volatility. Taking a look at gold here, uh, pretty much just a sideways move. Didn't do anything on the session, just hovering at the 21 EMA. MACD is trying to improve. RSI is pretty much flat at the 50. Any kind of an up move here, I think gold gets moving again. Uh, but on the weekly, you've got a downtrend that's in place. I think you got to respect that uh, until things uh, shake out more, uh, this downtrend on gold is currently in place. Uh, even though you had some higher highs, let's see if we can get above this level here and establish, you know, another higher high and a higher low. One higher high and potentially a higher uh, a higher low doesn't make a trend. I would need to see another higher high above this and a higher low. Then I think uh, gold is back on the upside swing. Uh, if right, if nothing else, right now, just a bit of a bounce. But you've got to love where gold is sitting. Uh, in this range. And if we look at gold volatility, it continues to drop. Now, we did have a gold trade come off today. So we closed a gold strangle for a 50% winner. Volatility continuing to drop, not great for gold. I don't love it uh, necessarily on the volatility side here. I would like to see a little bit of an uptick like we were starting to get. But you are sitting, when we look at the weekly, right dead center of the uh, Bollinger Bands and the three ATR bands. You're sitting right scrap, you know, smack dab in the middle of 21 uh, EMA. This is a great place, I think, to put on a strangle. Uh, you've got the weekly momentum coming out, but you've got the daily momentum trying to pick up. Uh, a little bit of a downturn today. Uh, I like those two forces battling it out. Uh, we've got uh, copper uh, trade on right now. This thing is doing extremely well. We are back to... The downtrend, you know, this descending triangle uh, line. So I think uh, that looks decent for us uh, in here. Uh, for our 112 trade, it's doing fantastic. Nothing to do on HG. Uh, I do like the fact that it's moved off the lows here. And I think where it's sitting on the weekly, smack dab in the middle, and the ATR line is getting pretty flat. I think that's a good indication that you could also potentially strangle some copper in here uh, as well. Nothing to do on lean hogs necessarily, but I like this bounce putting us back to the 21 uh, EMA on both the daily and the weekly and sitting pretty far between these ATR bands. I think uh, lean hogs, good opportunity to get in. And then also here, as we look at, uh, live cattle futures in this downtrend that we've been in uh, here, we've had a pretty nice little rally. Uh, and when we look at it here, this rally is putting us back close to the 21 EMA on the weekly. We're short of the 21 EMA on the daily. So maybe another day or two up uh, getting a nice bounce, but the weekly MACD is heading lower along with RSI. And on the daily, MACD is heading higher along with RSI. We're getting close to the 21. You're almost in between. And we really are pretty close to in between the three ATR bands. I like it here on live cattle. I think it's decent. Uh, if we look at the CVOL on this as well, you've got some decent volatility uh, on, on this. And you can tell volatility as well by just looking at the Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands are wide but contracting. So you, the wider they get, the more volatility you have. And then when they start to contract, your volatility starts to shrink. Well, I think this is a good spot before they shrink too much to potentially put on a strangle. And we did that today. So you can look at the CVOL, you can look at other volatilities, or you can simply just look at the Bollinger Bands and when they're wide and starting to narrow, that's a great time to put on a strangle if you're dead center of that particular strangle. Uh, so we've got that that working today. Individual sectors on the session. Leading sector, once again, semiconductors up another 2%. They are unstoppable. Retail up 2%. And then uh, regional banks up about 1.4% on the day uh, as regional banks continue to power higher, helping the IWM and other factors. If we look at the two weakest sectors, 
uh, by far the only two negative sectors, utilities down just fractionally today and energy down fractionally today because uh, oil was pretty much unchanged. Nothing to do there. If we take a quick run through these and you take a look, what sectors are dead center of the three ATR uh, semis uh, on the weekly are right there. I think any pullback here is interesting. But if I wanted to strangle some things, excuse me, uh, taking a look at financials, right in the middle of the bands, uh, I think that's interesting to take a look at here as well. So you got those, as well as uh, communications uh, is at the high end of the band, so nothing to do on those. Those are getting over overbought uh, on the... Uh, uh, the in, uh, industrials here, or I'm sorry, biotech, we're at the XBI. Uh, biotech, pretty much in the middle uh, to upper end, nothing uh, overextended there. Real estate overextended to the upside a bit, uh, as well as uh, XLI, uh, your industrials, XLK, your tech, way overextended, way, way, way overextended, super overextended. I would be uh, a little bit uh, bearish here, expecting a pullback uh, there. And then XLY overextended as well, uh, which would mean you've got some mixed uh, technicals uh, going, or in mixed sectors, which means you get some mixed Magnificent 7 going on. Apple up fractionally on the day, overextended. Microsoft down fractionally, still overextended. Amazon down, was overextended, pulling back like everything else should be doing. Okay, Amazon being your uh, XLY uh, here, which was pretty flat because Amazon was down, but Tesla was up, not quite overextended. So those two canceling themselves out a bit. Uh, Meta down today, decently overextended, pulling back. Google up fractionally, not overextended yet. Uh, NVIDIA down, overextended, heading into earnings. Tesla we already covered, and then Netflix roaring and overextended uh, to the upside and RSI is overbought as well. All right, so there's where we are when it comes to uh, the sectors and the indexes today. How did we fare? Uh, well, Delta today uh, moved up a little bit to 215, all good uh, on the session. So a good uh, a good Delta reading, 0.07%. I think we're in fantastic shape uh, for Delta. We are very Delta neutral, perfect. Theta up a little bit today. We took off a aging uh, gold strangle and we added a live cattle strangle, which added some new theta life to uh, the book, uh, taking us back up to 0 0.31. So up a little bit on theta, still pretty good. We'll take a thousand theta, uh, a thousand bucks a day uh, on that. And taking a look at the net lick, we dropped fractionally on the day. So uh, our net lick dropped a little bit, 325. We're still within 5,000 of our all-time high on the day. Most of this drop was due to oil uh, and the oil pullback a bit today. Oil moves higher, our net lick's going to rock it. Uh, and the market's continuing to move higher, which means it's getting further from our traps on our 112. So we're losing some money that we had started to build up on the trap and the PDS uh, part. It's all good. Uh we didn't close anything for losses, so we're in good shape. BP usage, we did add a new trade today. Uh, we're at 175, 630, which puts us at 53.99, 54%. Perfect BP uses, love where we are, gives us some flexibility to do some things. And we gained another 1410 bucks today on that gold strangle. Now taking the month to 22,993, up over 7.18% on the month. Great realized month so far. Until, unless something happens uh, ugly, uh, this is the best realized gain month that we have had in a long time. $22,000 alone this month. So we made twenty two grand uh, on our account, uh, up almost, again, 7% there. That's a pretty good return for people in a year for some people. Um, and we did that in less than a month so far. Uh, the monthly net lick change. Uh, I think we need, need, need to update the formula. Uh, monthly net net licks up five grand, one point six percent. Not quite there on the month. Now, if we take a look at the trade from today, this is it. 
this is one of our weekly strangles uh, in gold. So this is a winning trade uh, in gold. We had put this on on 11.1. So we actually were only in this trade 14 days. This is what volatility does for you. We entered when volatility was strong and we were out in 14 days instead of 30 uh, on this strangle, got in at 940, sold today at 470. $1,410 was our PL, 50% winner, 20.7% return on margin. Uh, so we'll take that trade. We're going to go book it into our uh, future strangles uh, that we have here. So we'll book this trade, put it on here. Future strangles for the month up 9,770. So we are uh, all winners. Eight straight winners on the month for futures strangles. And we've had one, two, three, four gold strangles close. And of those four gold strangles, 19 days, 61, which is our old one, 55, which is an old one, and 14. So two of these, less than 20 days in trade because we put those on in pretty good volatility versus these older ones that were put on in lower volatility. Just took them low, longer time to come up. Uh, we are doing uh, fantastic. So if you look uh, at everything we got going on, uh, we've got 44 wins, eight losses on strangles. Uh, so doing pretty well on overall strangle trades. Uh, we'll take that. If we look at uh, where things are for the month, uh, we've got 35 winners, six losers. We got an 85% win rate, 22,993 uh, is our PL for the month. Loving where we are. Pretty happy with the account overall. Today, we spent uh, over an hour with members on a new trade. Uh, we jumped into the 1122 trade, a new version of the 112 trade that's built for smaller accounts, built to uh, help some of your long term accounts, even in IRAs. Uh, and it also will double the size of the trap. So, anywhere from a 50% to a 100% increase in the size of the trap using the exact same buying power. So another new trade. So we unveil the 1122 trade today. It's exciting because if you got a small account, it's a great way to size up uh, there. It's a great way to build a bigger trap. If you think we're going to be heading lower in the next, I don't know, two to four months, uh, on either regular 112 trades and especially the long term 112 trades. If you think we're heading lower, and I do, I think a rally is still coming. I think the Santa Claus rally, and maybe it's here early. Um, I still think a pullback and another rally is uh, is coming. I still think we get some some higher uh, returns, but we are so overbought on many stocks right now. You just need to cool it a bit and then maybe have that rally. I still think there's a rally coming, and then I think there's more selling. Uh, that's around the corner. If you think that selling is coming, and for us, we love selling. I love when the market's dropping two, three, five, ten percent over a couple months span. I mean, if we get a month, uh, a, you know, a ten percent down month or a five percent down month, a ten percent down two or three month span, it's going to be awesome. And the new one one two two trade will double your profits on your standard 112 trade. So exciting stuff today. If you like this, click the like button. Uh, if you want to find out more about that 1122 trade, join us in the Discord. Okay. One trade alone, okay? One version of this could pay you anywhere from five to $10,000 extra on one trade. It's worth it. Join the Discord, find out what we're doing, uh, find out about the 1122 trade. And then also, you know, the big new uh, trade reveals coming on the tiered 112. Uh, excited to show you what we're doing on that uh, as well. If you're not in the Discord, look in the description below. Go ahead and click on that. Join us. If not, hey, like the video here. Help me out a bit. Uh, and uh, we'll see you guys in trading tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.